YouTube friends, what's going on? David Lee back with a brand new video and today we're talking about one of my favorite plugins and how I use them. Now plugins will vary from function to function. You have some that are specific to transitions, some that are specific to color grading, some that are specific to audio, etc, etc. The one I'm going to be talking about today is sort of like twofold. Um, it's from Red Giant. It's called Trap Code Shine version 3.0. And Trap Code Shine usually is used for uh, volumetric lighting effects, uh, but the way I actually use it is more so for uh, adding a little bit of uh, fill for on-camera talents. So say if you're doing like a corporate interview, um, if you're doing a short film, you know, anything where you're filming uh, a talent, an actor, um, a subject that's giving dialogue. And I started to play around with this um, with a short film that I did a few months back uh, because I like the way that I uh, that I lit the scene, um, but I felt like there was something just missing from uh, from the people's faces when I was doing the interviews. So at the time, I had got like a trial version of Trap Code Shine, and I was playing around with it mostly for like volumetric lighting, um, for like adding more lighting to a lamp, uh, to a practical, or maybe for like a window, you know, things like that. That it was like, sort of meant. For and sort of designed for. So we're gonna hop into Adobe Premiere. Uh, you can use it also in After Effects, but I'm gonna go into Premiere, show you a recent uh, video that I did for a client, sort of like a documentary testimonial uh, corporate video, and show you how I use Chop Code Giant to add just a little bit of a fill to my on-camera talent space. All right, so we are in um, Adobe Premiere Pro right now. Uh, this is like a 90-ish second commercial uh, that I'm filming for uh, for a client. They do small business loans um, for underserved communities. Uh, you know, basically businesses that need loans for for whatever. Um, in this situation, Auto Body Shop needed a loan to get um, like a prep station and uh, some more equipment for spraying cars and you know things that body shops need. Anyways, let's get to the point. Uh, this is A7R Mark II footage, uh, films with the SLR Magic 50mm uh, f1.1 in Super 35. So, you know, give me that 75mm portrait length, which uh, which you can see here. Uh, minus the grade, uh, I'll show you kind of what it looks like um, without the grade. So, let me just disable all of this stuff. And then we'll disable Trap Code Shine as well. So this is what it looks like, uh, S-Log2, a custom um, custom profile that I have with S-Log2. Uh, then if we re-enable my, uh, my gray, just toggle this stuff back on. So this is what it looked like uh, after the gray. This is pretty much the look that I was going for as far as contrast ratio uh, with the key side and then um, the, uh, the, the dark side here. So you can see the light wrapping around his face, uh, not too harshly, not creating any harsh shadows. Uh, but I felt like, you know, it's okay, but there could have been something a little bit uh, more. Um, but given the office space we were filming in and with the uh, with the crew I usually run with, which is like just me on um, this day, I had one person. I didn't have the equipment that I wanted to really create uh, what I wanted to. So I figured, well, let's, let's use Trap Code Shine. So by default, this is what Trap Code Shine looks like. If I just drag it onto uh, to the clip, it's gonna like brighten everything, <laughs> brighten everything up. Uh, because again, this this uh, plugin is really used for like volumetric lighting to create more lighting coming from like windows, like a cathedral and stuff like that. Uh, but these are some of the different parameters. I only really touch like three or four of these. One is the ray length. So right now, um, by default, it's set to 4.0. So you know, rays of light just Blast and have everywhere. Uh, you know, usually I, I put this to like 0.1 or something um, just so that it's still enabled. Um, but you know, you can play around with it and put it to like one or something. Um, as you can see right there, it kind of like yeah, like accentuates everything, you know, almost like an echo effect. Um, then you can use boost light. So by default, it's just set to zero, but you know, you can boost it up to like five and it just, it just uh, intensifies the actual ray length himself. So you know, this is like something you could maybe see like in a sci-fi movie. Um, and then you have the different uh, sub options here. So colorize is pretty much the next thing I use. The, I, what I found is the highlights, the midtones, the color. I, I tend to like the defaults. They work out pretty well for 
adding something extra to skin tones. The only thing I do change is shadows because right now you can see, let me turn this back down. Uh, right now shadows is like a red color. So, you know, everything kind of has this red uh, opacity to it. So what I find is I take the color picker and I try to find something already in this scene that is uh, within the shadow area. So, you know, uh, I think what I did originally was I, I picked a piece of his hair because I felt like something white in the shadows could add some good contrast um, to the to the other colors. So if I pick that, then anything in the shadows tends to, you know, will be this color. So you can see before it was like red and now it's um, uh, sort of like a like a gray silver uh, gunmetal kind of tone. And then from here, you have different options for the blend mode. Uh, screen, you have overlay, which changes it to that. Uh, it's a pretty, one thing I will say is Trapco Shine is a very intensive um, plugin. Like it'll use a lot of your resources and I have an iMac Pro. So, you know, it's it's pretty intense. Um, I find it better to actually send your clip to After Effects and, you know, do all your rendering in there. It tends to be a lot easier. Um, but, you know, if you only have like two or three clips, I just do it in Premiere. Uh, but you have different options here. I tend to leave it on screen and then I'll play around with the, the opa with the opacity. So maybe 60% and then drop it down a little bit, you know. So uh, this works for me actually, you know, because it kind of brightens up the scene itself. Um, but I'll show you exactly what I did instead um, for just lighting his face because that's all I really wanted to do was to add more, uh, more of a pop to his face. So let's disable that. And then uh, from here, let's go back to the original adjustment layer. So these are my settings. I had the ray length to 0.1, boost light zero, uh, the shadow. Again, I just, I picked a certain color, which is uh, this, uh, this color here. And then uh, blend mode screen, shine opacity 60. And then what I did was I just created a mask around his face, uh, feathered it a little bit. And then I just tracked it, you know, cause these are very, very short clips. They're, you know, like five seconds or something like that. So we'll take a look right now. Um, the adjustment layer is disabled. So this is what it looks like without trap code shine. And then if I re-enable the adjustment layer, see it kind of just fills in his face just a little bit. It's very subtle. You still have that, that nice little eye light here. Um, but again, we'll disable it. So right now it looks very realistic. Uh, if I re-enable it, it just, it just brings out his face more, you know, so it's, uh, it's more pleasing for me. Uh, but that's how I use Trap Code Shine. And, uh, yeah, I'll take it back probably with an outro or something like that. So there you have it. Trap Code Shine in a nutshell. Uh, Ray Giant has many, many plugins that you can get, uh, for a 14 day trial, including Trap code shiny if you've never used it before. And it's great because 14 days should be enough time for you to even use on a project. Like you have uh, a full version of it for 14 days that you can use um, for, you know, project you have coming up. All the other products are essentially just, you know, suites of like color grading or particle effects, uh, such as their universe. I think it's $99 a year. So it's, you know, $100 for a full year subscription. But you have all these like particle effects and, uh, you know, specular lighting effects. You can just go through a library and download and use them for, um, you know, for your videos. And you guys have heard me talk about Magic Bull looks. I've been using it for the past year for all my color grading. Uh, I have Cosmo, which is sort of uh, like a plugin that's similar to Beauty Box. Cosmo and Beauty Box are designed to uh, increase like facial features. Uh, so if you have someone with wrinkles, you can smooth out their skin and uh, remove blemishes. Uh, you can renoise the footage as well too, you know, things like that. But Trapco is trying to use pretty frequently, you know, um, if there's a scene that looks pretty dull, you want to spice it up a little bit, uh, layer it on top with some, uh, some light leaks or some lens flares. They go really well hand in hand. Hope you guys found the video useful. If you did, leave it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already, just so you're notified of new content coming out. Leave a comment down below. Let me know how you guys use any kind of plugins or color grading tips uh, for talent. And as always friends, remember every day you have an opportunity to create your experience and to write and tell your own story. My name is David Lee. And I'm gonna catch you guys in the next video.